Hey guys and gals, Sean Kelly here, Backpack Brews. It's been a while since I've done a beer review, and tonight we kind of we've actually got three. They're kind of all related. It's a couple of offerings from Southern Tier Brewing Company out in New York, and it's a uh, three of their Smash single malt and single hop um, beers that they put out. First we have the uh, ration type breakfast as they call which is the Cascade and for dinner as uh, it was called in my house everybody else probably calls it lunch we have the Centennial and of course that leaves supper which is the Columbus Hop and we'll probably actually go in ironically in order of uh, Cascades of these three tend to be the least pungent in terms of alpha acids so you know pretty uh be pretty interesting to see we don't know how long they hopped everything or how long the boil was or anything but i do know they both have or they all, excuse me all three have 4.8 percent alcohol so must have been about the same gravities so it'll hopefully give us a real good chance to see what the, if you can identify or really tell the uniqueness of uh, each one of the hops so Cascade is probably something you know is if you look at Hop Union is really kind of one of the first commercially available hops in the United States I believe in the 70s it came out uh, or it was released to, to be to, for use in the 70s it was probably developed before that in the 50s but and then you have uh, the Centennial which some people call the Super Cascade it's just got more alpha in it maybe not as citrusy as the Cascade but I definitely get that heavy floral that people use the Cascade for and you have Columbus which of the three is the highest alpha content normally and tends to be used for a clean bittering and it's gonna you know have some pretty strong floral to it so I think it'll be interesting to see uh, how these three different tastes so uh, we'll go ahead and get cracking like I said, first we have the uh, Cascade or the Breakfast. So let's take a look here. I mean, color is not really going to matter because they probably were using the same hop for, or excuse me, the same uh, malt for all three. So definitely has a, a floral and citrusy nose on it. Not overly pungent, but definitely the reminds me of something you'd find in a on a West Coast IPA. Yeah, I don't think they really use too much in the boil just because it's not real it's not really bitter. At least it doesn't have that lingering bitter bitterness that you find on some <clears throat> when you've um, boiled some a lot of alpha a lot of IBUs. You know, it has a pretty good malt profile just for using one particular malt so I'm assuming they use two row doesn't actually say on the bottle but you know now we're gonna move over to Centennial Super Cascade as some places call it so let's take a look here You know, it has a little bit more floral nose to it, maybe almost a little bit of dankness, not too much, but just a little bit caught on the initial sniff. Yeah, it's definitely more bitter, especially on the back. You can kind of tell, <clears throat> or I can tell, you know, after it hits the back of your back of your tongue, kind of still lingers there the bitterness. So. Even now, I'm getting some of that residual bitterness from it, and it's definitely not nearly as citrusy as, as the Columbus, or excuse me, the Cascade was. <laughs> you know, whenever you start comparing them side by side, and it's really the, the only variable that was used in it, you, know, you can definitely tell a difference. Whereas when you first start drinking beer, you have, you know, everything kind of tastes the same. Or, but So now we're going to try to Columbus, so... See how it comes out. Like I said, the colors, you know, weren't well, shouldn't matter because they were using the same malts, I'm assuming, but I 
Oh, there's definitely more bitterness to it. You know, it does have a little bit more citrus nose on it than the than the Columbus did. Excuse me, that than the Centennial did, but nowhere near as much as the Cascade does. You know, and really the the nose is pretty pretty light. I mean, you know, it's not really used as an aroma hop as much as the other two are, so you can kind of you kind of get that sense from just taking a few pulls with your nose off of it. But it definitely has a lot more bitterness to it, or perceived bitterness than the other two, and it seems that. Seems to be stronger and definitely lasts longer than Yeah, even compared to the Centennial, it's Columbus definitely really hits you. And then with the Cascade, you know, it really dissipates pretty quickly. Granted now I've had three different poles of them and it's starting to get a little bit of a probably tongue fatigue so quickly so I'm pulling those <clears throat> three different beers with three different single hops in it but so that was it for tonight we're only just uh, the Cascade Centennial and the Columbus Smash beers um, by Southern Tier you know I'd, I'd pick it up if you really want to try and see what you know those three different hop varieties kind of taste like on their own Cascade is pretty popular, especially on the West Coast IPAs. Use it a lot for uh, you know dry hopping and definitely for aroma. You can definitely tell it has a, a much higher aroma, stronger aroma, I should say, than the other two. And I can see probably why they use Columbus with its high alpha, and it's pretty clit, crit, excuse me, it's pretty uh, clean in terms of the bitterness it provides. It's you know it's not like you're getting a heavy dose of citrus or floral. There is some floral to it, but like I said, it has a little bit stronger nose, maybe just in general than the Columbus, than the Centennial. But the Columbus definitely has a lot more back end bitterness than the other two. And that's saying quite a bit because Centennial has quite a bit more back end bitterness to me than the Cascade. So thanks for watching, and uh, we'll catch you back.